Good evening everybody, it's Susie from Ruby Rose Reborns and I'm here tonight with my lovely beautiful little Emma Louise who is my penny sculpt by, uh, who was reborn by Crystal Wynn of Paris Alley Reborns. And I have her with me tonight because she's going to help me do, let's see if we can't get you to look. Okay, she's going to help me do a tag. We're going to do um, the Suzanne from Baby Bunting's Nursery, her tag on when did you start collecting dolls or something. I'm pretty sure it's something like that. But I'll leave the link in my description bar. And I'm also going to be reviewing the new kit that's come out by Bonnie Brown Tink. So we'll just get started right now with Miss Emma so I can show you just how beautiful she is. And she's in her Babadoo outfit that I got this summer. And I'm going to move your cute little bunny over here so everybody can see. And I didn't put shoes or socks on her because I just love these little legs of hers. Uh, and I love her limbs. I mean, they're so nice and chubby. They're so true to her age. And they're just done so well by Crystal. Just such a pretty peachy complexion my girl has. And this is um, a Babadoo outfit or rompers. You can see her. I guess it's a bubble suit, really, that I got this summer in one of their sales and it has this um, I want to say waffle stitch or whatever but it's it's different and it has a Peter Pan collar with pink uh, pink rickrack pink rickrack around the sleeves and it buttons up with snaps on the bottom and saw one piece and it just it's just a darling beautiful classy <laughs> outfit for a baby baby girl they had them in the and they had it in blue too for the boys but I got this and I've been waiting to have a chance to put it on Emma and this is this is her style there so there's my Emma in her pretty little outfit, and I'm going to just go closer so you guys can see this stitching I'm talking about. I really don't know what it's called. It's not smocking, but it is beautiful, whatever it is. And the front part is all lined, and the sleeves are not lined, but you can see the pink rickrack around the Peter Pan collar. And looking through the camera and looking at those beautiful lips, that beautiful face. Oh, hello. Anyway, so now and I just put a little pink bow in her head and did the top of her hair with some curls. So, I'm going to get started on the tag. So, Suzanne um, talked about when she was a child and she got this... Um, doll or she had this book and her grandmother gave her which was really a lovely keepsake anyway so she talked about that so some of us have done elaborated on the tag I know Suzanne of Suzanne's Baby's done this and Holly Church has done this and I believe Sue Drinkwater's done this well it's, it's a very good tag because I think anybody that's in Reborn's um, reborn baby doll collecting or just doll collecting period has loved dolls probably all their life and I know I have and I had a couple of dolls the first dolls that I remember having uh, were um, tiny tears and this is back in like 1958 59 and I had a molded hair tiny tears and I also had one a little bit later after that that was uh, had actual 
uh, wig on or rooted in hair, plugged in hair. It had hair. It wasn't molded. And I liked those dolls enough, but the very first doll that I remember, and when I think back on my childhood, there's really only one doll that just absolutely is my childhood, and that was Ideal. Put her out in about 1960, 1961. Hmm. Somewhere in there. Um, Thumbelina. And I know a lot of you out there know who Thumbelina is. That is my age. And she was a wonderful doll. And the first Thumbelina that came out was like 20 inches, 19 or 20 inches. She had a cloth body and vinyl limbs and a vinyl head and and hair. And she had a knob that turned on her back that you could crank on her back and her head would wobble around. And she was just so beautiful to me. And so much of a baby. And uh, the funniest part of this is, is my mother's told me this story. Somehow I blanked it out. And I have a real good memory. But I, I don't remember this. But she has told it to me over and over again. I remember parts of it. When I was, I think this was when I was seven, maybe almost eight. We had um, a poodle named Peppy. And he was a little black poodle. And I remember the day that we went and picked him out and from the litter and brought him home. Well, my neighbors, the reason why we got this poodle, my, we had my family, I guess, because I was the baby and came along a little bit later, um, always had like bigger dogs. And when I was smaller, I can remember her very well. We had a Doberman named Queenie. But then when we moved to California and we moved into this um, neighborhood, our neighbors had two poodles, two French poodles. And I really liked them. They were so cute. Or they were toy poodles. You know, they weren't real tiny, but they were kind you know, the toy size. So when we decided to get a dog, because I was begging for one, we got we went and they told us where to go to to find a puppy. So we did, and we got him, and it was a little black poodle named Peppy and I just adored Peppy and he was usually always in a puppy fluffy cut you know every once in a while my mom would take him to the groomers and get that very fa the fancy cut on the poodles and they would paint his toenails red and I just wasn't into that I, d I didn't like that at all and but Peppy was neutered but Peppy had a problem he just would not stop um, lifting his leg on my mother's beautiful draperies and on the couches that were all new, and he just just kept going at that, and she just got more upset and more upset. My dad, oh my goodness, I can't even tell you, and um, so finally she could. We had him for you know, a couple, one or two years or whatever. Well, my neighbor's sister, she really wanted Peppy. And um, so my mother talked to me and talked to me, and she wanted to give Peppy to our neighbor's sister because, um, honestly, she, she just couldn't deal with it anymore. And, you know, looking at it now, I'm thinking I probably would have a hard time dealing with it, too. So, I, you know, I was absolutely against it. No, 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 no. And um, so then she bribed me. She said, if you'll let us do this and he'll get a great home and all this other stuff, he so says, I'll take you down to Broadway and we will get that Thumbelina doll right now, today, this morning. And I'm like, really? Okay. So we went, I agreed. And as a, you know, seven-year-old, you don't really know what you're agreeing to. And I went down there. We went upstairs to um, get Thumbelina. And there she was in her beautiful box. And I was so excited. So she... So we get the doll, and my mom's like so relieved. We're coming down the escalator, 
Now, this part, I, I don't remember doing this, but she insists I did. And then I got this funny look on my face, and I realized what this meant, that Peppy was going to leave, that I wouldn't have Peppy anymore, um, and I'd have this doll. And I got so upset that I threw the doll down the escalator in the box and all and hit the lady in front of us and I was screaming crying and my mother was so embarrassed got down to the end of um, <laughs> the escalator my mom picked up the doll apologized to the lady and explained what was going on and I was screaming you can't give my doll my dog away I don't want that dog I don't want I want my dog I don't want my this doll anyway so uh, we came home and, you know, Peppy was already gone. My dad had made arrangements for that. And I will say I do know that he did go to that lady because a little bit later I was able to go over to her house and see him. But so I was just hysterical. And it took me all day and my mom took the doll out of the box and, you know, put her in my room on my bed and I just would have nothing to do with her. And then finally I did and I'm so glad I did because that was Thumbelina. And right now I have a reproduction of her. I don't have an original Thumbelina. I did, but I sold her and I kind of regret that. I didn't have my Thumbelina, um, but... I did manage to find one from 1960s on eBay, but um, I ended up getting this one, which is a reproduction by Ideal, but she looks just exactly like Thumbelina, only she's a little bit, her vinyl is more hard, but this is what Thumbelina looked like, and I want to see if I can get her in the the camera there. Yeah, that's what she looked like. And she was so, you know, look at that face. And there's been many times, and these are her limbs, you know, and her little feet. And she's still a very collectible doll. And then her body, and then that's how they did her legs. They sewed across here. And then, but this was what made Thumbelina such a wonderful doll, is this crank in the back. You crank, and you crank, and you crank. Let me see. I think I cranked enough. Now watch her head. Is it move? Look at that. And that, and it would move. And oh, man, for years, for the rest of my childhood, I hauled my Thumbelina all over the place. I, crank, I would crank her the wheel up, and sometimes I'd wake up in the morning, and her head would still be going. And um, my mom would go to our church boutiques, and when she did and she saw little baby sweaters, she would buy them with the booties and the bonnets and bring them home to me. And that was wonderful. And I would carry her like a baby, and everywhere I went, I had her wrapped up in the blanket. And, you know, that was my doll, and that was Thumbelina. And that was the beginning of the love for dolls for me. Anyway, like I said, this one's a repo, and I still have her. She, she wasn't that expensive, but... Uh, and I keep looking at Thumbelinas, at, you know, on eBay, and I keep thinking, oh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to get another one, a real one. You know, they're, they're not cheap to get. They're a couple hundred, three hundred dollars to get a really nice one. And so that is Thumbelina, and the other doll that I never had but did come out at that time that I keep thinking I'm going to buy one is the Vogue Baby Deer by Eloise Wilkins. Um, she is, that's a beautiful doll. And I'm sure some of you may have that in your collection. That would be fun to see if you do have that doll. So, Holly Church, I saw that doll in your ca cabinet when I was watching one of your videos. So, if you, if that's really what I saw, I'd love to see it. Anyway, so, put her down. And that's, that's my story about collecting dolls, my first doll. And right now, very quickly, I'm going to... 
open this box up. I don't think we can see it very good. Oh, so I'm gonna, okay, we're going to just open it up and then I'll show you individually the pieces. This is the Tink Sculpt from Bonnie Brown that just came out and I uh, follow her on my YouTube channel and she's here on YouTube but I don't can't really say her name right now because I don't know if she'd want me to say it but anyway she's getting this doll so I promised her that I would indeed You're just too cute not to have in the picture. Okay. That I would indeed show this doll. This kit. And she is a tiny girl. Really a tiny girl. But she is going to make a beautiful... Oh. Oh, I guess I ordered that. <laughs> um. Okay, and here is her oh she she's gonna be a, absolutely adorable that's her her certificate of authenticity and this little girl is 617 of 1650 I thought this was going to be like an open edition maybe maybe it will be like Saskia and Levi and this is the first edition. Yeah, it says first edition up here. Numbered and signed by Bonnie Brown. So that that's cool. So they're anticipating big things for this girl. Okay, I love Bonnie Brown's um, vinyl. I do. I love it. It's so soft. It's easy to paint. And there's her little cute head. Oh my gosh, she's just a adorable she's got very big eyes so I will put glass eyes in there so she has big eyes and we're gonna root her with dark hair she's got a lovely shaped head so this girl's gonna have hair and she even has a soft spot there see it okay and then here are her little tiny arms so she's a preemie but they make darling clothes for preemies now, you know. There's her and their hands. Her hands are wonderful because they've got those long fingers like newborns have. Newborns have those long, long fingers. And she's got a lot of detail in the palms. Oh, that's cute. And then, here's her little legs. Okay. I can get it out. Oh, look at those tiny little feet. Oh, my goodness, but so cute. Lots of detail. Lots and lots of detail here. You know, it's beautiful detailing. And she comes with um, a belly plate that Levi and Saskia, they didn't come with. But there's her belly plate, which will be fun. So that's Tink, and I am reviewing her, and I think she's adorable. And then she has a nice body, and I do love the bodies that Bonnie Brown chooses for her dolls. I love the Saskia body. That's what I ended up putting on Missy here, was I got her out of that big body for a 22 inch doll or 22 to 23 which is way too long and I put her in a Saskia body and it's perfect and I don't and I personally do not like the jointed um full limbs I just this is perfect so there we go now if I can just she is tiny one, just one more thing, thing of her little head. She is a she is a small little preemie sized girl, but she's going to be very cute, and um, I'm excited to have the chance to reborn her because this she's going to be a darling baby. Okay, well that's all, folks. 
And thank you so much for sticking around and watching my video. And your comments always mean a great deal to me. And my new subscribers, oh my, yes, they, they mean um, a great deal to me as well, you guys. I and I hope you'll, you'll keep, you'll stick with me. And I'm trying to have a little diversity in my channel and all. So anyway, all right. And tomorrow I'll be uploading my Valentine's video. But tonight it was Emma's turn, and um, I enjoyed this tag, Suzanne. Thank you for thinking of it and for me being able to participate. All right, we'll talk to you later all. Bye.